Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. This is my spoilery review over Deadpool and Wolverine. And I do mean I'm going to spoil the hell out of this movie from the word go. You need to click off the channel right now. I waited a long time for this team up. All right, so I'm one of the first people in the world to see this movie. I mean, aside from, you know, not being a part of the press or one of these gaming network channels like IGN or GameSpot or something, and they get to see the early, uh, you know, the early release. But to the general public, I was one of the first to see it being here inside of Tokyo, Japan. Unfortunately, I'm not inside of New Zealand, Australia, which would have even been better. But hey, it is what it is. I just got back home from the 9 a.m. showing of this movie on Wednesday. You guys can see I popped my own popcorn. I still have half the bag left that I had snuck inside the movie theater with me. But man, this movie was absolutely phenomenal. And I just want to give it up for Deadpool in general. Because, first of all, let me just say that these movies have been... Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? When something is consecutively and successfully done... It's consistent. These are consistent movies. All three of them have been phenomenal movies. And the third one just absolutely takes the cake and it just, it fires on all cylinders and it doesn't let up the whole way. This is something that must be enjoyed in the company of good friends, people that enjoy these type of movies. This movie is a swan song to the Fox universe of Marvel characters. It's pretty much, you know, it's a really big swan song goodbye to all of these characters. This is like the equivalent to Infinity War and Endgame for Marvel, but just on the Fox side of things. And uh, like I said, I'm spoiling this, so spoiling this. So if you don't want to hear anything else, man, you really need to click off right now. I mean, I've already gave you warning before, but I'm giving you extra warning now. So, yeah, man, uh, a lot of characters that you thought that you would never see again show up inside of this. And man, the cameos have been good. It's really a goodbye to all of these characters. All right, so the story and the plot goes a little bit something like this. I got all my notes on my phone here, so it, which are not in order, by the way. So I'm going to be jumping around trying to, you know, sequence it inside of my mind as I'm looking at it on the spot. Uh, let's hope that I get this right. There is a character inside of here who plays kind of a good guy turned villain. Yeah, he's he's kind of that duality character. Is a guy working for the TVA. His name is Paradox. And uh, he wants to be the head of the TVA, not just not just a subordinate member of this group. He wants to control the whole thing and have power over it. Uh, you knew right from the get go when you see this guy show up on screen, you're like, OK, this guy is he's one of the main villains of the film and kind of the main architect behind everything that happens inside of the film. So there's all these different variant characters inside of here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of variant Deadpools that show up on the screen. And there's a whole lot of variant Wolverines that even appear on screen as well. And we're going to get to those guys a little bit later. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, the Deadpool that we know, he is, if you guys did not already know this, he is part of the X-Men universe. You know, the two decades of films that we had got uh, with all of these characters, with the Hugh Jackman character. Uh, Professor X, all of those guys. He, Deadpool is part of that universe. And uh, what's getting ready to go on here is that this guy, Paradox, is saying that, you know, uh, Deadpool's universe is going to end in like a, about a thousand years or some, whatever the timeline that he's given. And he says, instead of waiting for it, he just likes to go ahead and prune things. He wants to cold the universe uh, as it is right now, just to go ahead and get rid of it. He's like, I, I don't even want to wait for the future. I just want to get rid of this thing, which is pretty much going to make everybody inside the whole X-Men universe cease to exist, including Deadpool and such. 
And, uh, you know, he strings along Deadpool on some bullshit thing like uh, your uni your universe is getting ready to end. I need you to do such and such and you could possibly save it. You know, he, he, he gives him the bullshit lie to string him along to uh, have him actually want to do something for himself and not serve uh, Deadpool's purpose of saving his universe. He always had headed inside of his mind that he's getting ready to call this universe and kill all these people. But yeah, he turns out to be the main villain of the movie. And then uh, there is another main villain. Her name is Cassandra. It's uh, Professor Xavier's twin sister who, unbeknownst to Professor Xavier, you know, from the X-Men universe that we are aware of, he is not aware that she exists. And uh, so she's inside of this. She lives inside of this universe called the Void, which is like kind of like a junk, a junkyard for all the universes. All of the uh, heroes and villains that seem to be the trash of their universe, they get thrown away here and they live inside of this, inside of this, it's a void is what it is. So they're living inside of this place and she's one of these characters and she's a villain character living here. But yeah, uh, you know, if our Professor Xavier knew that she existed, you know, he would uh, wreak havoc and he would move heaven and earth just to try to reunite with her and, uh, you know, give her a future and to take care of her and things like that. So she's aware of him, but he's not aware of her. And he doesn't make an appearance inside this movie, by the way. But I'm just setting up who one of the other villains is, is her. And she has the power of telekinesis as well. She can't just mentally, you know, just go and dive inside of people's minds and read their minds and such. She has to physically uh, touch the person's brain in order to, uh, you know, have some type of telepathic uh, input or getting source of information from them. So there's her. But man, all of these characters that show up inside of this movie, uh, what am I missing out on here? I was going to say something. The, the Wolverine that we have inside of this movie, he looks identical to the Wolverine that we know and love. But yes, he is not the one from the X-Men universe that died in the movie Logan. And uh, apparently this is the so-called worst the worst of all the Wolverines of all the universes. And uh, he let his kind of universe die. Well, he didn't let his universe die, but he was unable to save all of the X-Men within inside of his universe from dying because, you know, instead of going out there with them to do battle, he was instead inside of a bar getting drunk and uh, too hungover to go out and fight while these guys were out there on the battlefield dying. So that's his story, and this guy is pretty much beating up on himself. Uh, Deadpool is looking for uniting with Wolverine because he can help him save his own universe from destruction. But seeing that his Wolverine from his universe is dead, he tries to pull one from another universe. All of these guys are... Uh, uh, I almost said sticklers. They're not sticklers at all. They're all, what is the word that I'm looking for? They're all stuck up the ass. They're, they're all assholes, all of these other Wolverines, and they're really tough guys. And uh, Deadpool just doesn't want to deal with these guys at all, which is why he goes to the worst Wolverine to deal with, because he feels like he's the easiest to manage, right? So he tries to pick up this guy and recruit him to be uh, a part of his team so that they can do this thing together. But man, when he's jumping, talking about Deadpool now, when he's jumping through these universes, going through all of these different Wolverines, trying to look for the variant that uh, is most manageable for him to work with, right? He sees everything from a five foot three Hugh Jackman, which is comic book accurate inside of a bar. Everybody that's a comic book reader and an X-Men fan, and you see this five foot three Hugh Jackman, uh, that's gonna that's gonna be a huge applause and a big huge laugh inside of the theater. Uh, he jumps inside of another universe. He finds uh, a Wolverine that is cast by uh, what the hell is the damn Superman actor's name? Henry Cavill plays a variant inside of this. 
Deadpool gets off a joke. He's like, wow, you know, one one universe is trash is another universe is treasure. That was a, that was a huge laugh for me, man. Uh, you know, he only appeared Henry Cavill for like what? Uh, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds or so. It, it was truly a cameo in every sense of the word. But man, when he shows up on the screen, this is going to be a huge reaction for everybody out there. That was crazy. And uh, I think that was the two, that was the two big ones uh, when it comes to these to these Wolverines. And uh, even other characters from this whole Fox universe, just the Fox universe, not not let alone the X-Men universe, but uh, the Fantastic Four, the Fantastic Four character, Johnny Storm, Human Torch. He makes an appearance inside of this, played by none other than Chris Evans. You think he's here as Captain America, and then he reveals himself to be uh, the Human Torch. This is going to be huge. I mean, trust me, I, nobody's looking at this review right now before you go to see the movie. But once you see the movie, and I'm sure that you're going to come back and you're going to see this review later, you're going to say, yeah, all of these cameos were real big highlights of the movie. I mean, they let me get this out of the way. They don't make the movie. These All of these cameos do not make the movie but they make it special in the sense that you just see the treatment and how they treat X characters that used to be a part of this whole world. And they give them the send off that they really needed. Whether it's a humorous death inside of these, inside of this movie or uh, a valiant fight to the death and they, they die a uh, victorious death. It's just, it's something to behold, and it's just really, it's really nice, man. It's just really nice. Now, these are the huge cameos coming up that I'm getting ready to mention that were kind of a huger part of this movie, not just the 22nd, here is my face, and then they disappear off the screen type of thing. Like, these guys are getting some action in. They're part of the story. Electra, we all know her, uh, Jennifer Gardner. Blade, Wesley Snipes, and check this out, man. Gambit, played by uh what's what's the party boy's name? The guy that does the strip and the magic mic guy. Why am I at a loss of words for all these actors' names today? Channing Tatum. This guy is Gambit inside of this movie, and he does a hell of a job with the character. I mean, it's such a shame that he didn't get the get his own movie within the whole Fox universe. Or that he didn't even get the cameo inside of another uh, Fox movie, but you know it was, it wasn't it wasn't a rumor. Once upon a time, he was in the talks to get his own movie, and it just never materialized. Especially with the whole Disney takeover thing. But to have him show up here inside of this movie and to have like a, a critical role, man, was really something special. He does the uh, the Cajun accent down to a T. He sounds good, man. He looks good. He looks comic book accurate. He was he was really the character that we was waiting for. I mean, if you was on the fence about him and you was like, man, Channing Tatum is not going to be a good gambit. Why did they cast this asshole to play him? They could have got anybody else inside the world. He's going to, you know, he's going to squash that shit. So he's he's really good. He's really good. There was other characters mentioned that were a part of this world, but they're only mentioned by name only. So a part of this whole Electra Blade Gambit and X-23 uh, Laura team, the Punisher was once uh, with them, Quicksilver and Daredevil, but they all died off screen before this movie had even showed up. Uh, Deadpool had uh, remarked some, some sort of quip or joke like, well, which Punisher was it? Because there's like five of these guys. They never said which actor played it. You know, he's the only one that's kind of breaking the fourth wall and talking to us about actors actually playing characters. Whereas the other characters on screen, it's like, you know, unbeknownst to them, they're even getting played by actors. So they they don't they don't answer him saying which which Punisher it is. But yeah, it's absolutely amazing to see Wesley Snipes back in the role of his character. This was a swan song goodbye to him. Uh, hopefully we see this Gambit again in a future iteration of, a, of an X-Men movie or something like that would be nice. He might not show up again, unfortunately. 
Because as I keep saying over and over, this is like, this is really a swan song to this universe. If anybody's going to show up again inside of future Marvel movies, it's obviously going to be Ryan Reynolds. He doesn't die inside of this one. Uh, Wolverine, it's it's up in the air. It is up in the air. I, when I say Wolverine, I mean Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. He really solidified himself as being the de facto Wolverine. Like He's been inside of these movies for over two decades now. And really with this, I just cannot imagine anyone else playing him. He solidified his role that much. He he has become like a Christopher Reeve for this character where anybody else tries to step aside of these, these boots. It, 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 I don't care who it is. It could be Keanu Reeves or who, whoever the top A-list actor is, young A-list actor that's out there these days. Nobody's filling this role like him. I mean, there might be somebody just filling the shoes just to literally fill the shoes, but they're not going to be able to fill his shoes. So, man, the whole... There's really nothing tear-jerking about this movie. It's kind of comedy through and through. Comedy and action. Everything is on 11. The comedy is on 11. The action is on 11. But there was one moment for me that became sort of a, a tear-jerking moment. It wasn't tear-jerking, but... You know, I had that single tear roll down my eye, man. We never thought that we was going to see him put on this fucking mask. You know who I'm talking about. And when he slides this thing on at the end of the movie, it just felt right, man. All right. So you guys probably seen that cut inside of there. I, I wasn't crying. You were. But anyways, man, you guys have to go see this movie. This is going to be a blockbuster film. I can easily see this. Uh, outdoing the second film, and I see this being a billion dollar movie. I I really do. The word of mouth is gonna get around, and everybody's gonna say that you have to see this. I'm looking at some of these reviews out here from you know the usual suspects. IGN had given it something like a seven. Excuse me, Gamespot had given it a a four. Man, these people are absolutely nuts. Don't listen to the critics. The fans have already spoken. We have been behind the movies that we have been behind for years now. And we have declared we don't need the, the Rotten Tomatoes, the Banana Heads. Uh, we don't need anybody interjecting their opinion on us. We have spoken on what we like. And we don't need anybody to tell us what we do and don't like. Trust me, this movie's going to be successful. Everybody is going to absolutely love this thing. They're going to eat this shit up to bits, man. I'm I'm absolutely telling you. You got to go out here and see it. If if you're looking at this and you don't care about the spoilers and you, you, maybe me talking about it is going to entice you to want to see it even more. I mean, I just spoiled the fuck out of it, but um, you got to go see it. You got to go see it. You're going to see it again. I'm going to go see it again. Just, wow, 11. Fires on all cylinders. A must-see movie. Anyways, that's been my review over Deadpool and Wolverine, or you could say Wolverine and Deadpool. Just an all-around great movie, man. I've been waiting for this one like, like bated breath. All right, guys, if you found this review entertaining, it wasn't informative. It was just probably fun. If you found it entertaining in the least bit, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've seen the movie. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, where would you rank this inside of the Deadpool trilogy? Where would you rank it inside of Fox's universe and inside of the whole Marvel universe in general? We're talking about Fox, Sony, uh, Marvel, Disney. All of these movies come together inside of one cohesive universe. Where would you rank it inside of that? Whew, man, this is uh, it was really a good one. This is... This is up there with uh, with Winter Soldier. I can't necessarily say it's better than Infinity War and Endgame, but man, it comes close at times. It really does. All right, all right, I'm done talking. Just let me know what you think down below inside the comments, and I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till next time, peace.